This time on Allies or Enemies, we are looking at Tillatum. Our copy was supplied by the publisher, but the thoughts are all our own. Designed by Daniel Cassini and Simone Luciani, Tillatum is a one to four player game in which you will take on the role of European merchants during the Renaissance. This latest entry into the fabled series of tea games has many of the hallmarks of the series, including clever use of dice drafting, tight resource management, and a bunch of interwoven actions. And while that might sound a bit dry on paper, it actually might be one of the quicker, lighter, and combo ERT games in the series yet. Let's get back to that in a bit, though. First, let's take a quick look at how it works. Tillatum takes place over four rounds, with three turns in each, which means there are only 12 turns in the game, but you will do a lot with those 12 turns. Each action starts with choosing a die and then gaining the number of resources shown on that die of the type matching the die's color. And then you take the type and number of actions shown on the space, and there are five kinds of actions. Architect actions let you move your architect, and build pillars which let you later construct cathedrals. Merchant actions let you move your merchant and build houses. Character actions let you gain character tiles and put them in your rooms. Contract actions let you gain contracts to fulfill with goods. King actions move you up the king track, which gets points and decides round order, and joker actions let you choose any one of the other types. Often, these actions will also get you bonus tiles from the action spaces or towns, or bonus actions from characters and contract tiles, all of which can and will lead to combos. Along the way, players will gain points from all sorts of things, including contracts, cathedrals, and bonus tiles, and at the end of each round, everyone with a merchant or a house in whatever town is hosting that round's fair will gain points for that round's goal. And then at the end of the game, players will also score for full rooms, pillars and houses, and leftover resources. And finally, the greatest merchant will be named. There is a lot, lot more to the game than that, but that's more or less it in a nutshell. There is a lot going on here, and you'll never get the chance to do it all. So much so that there are actions you may only take once over a whole game. And this is at the heart of what makes Tillotum work, and what will bring players back to it. A key part of the replayability is due to the fairs that happen at the end of each round. These each have one of 11 possible goals tied to them, and each of these goals will enormously impact the gameplay. We've had games where three of the four are tied to gaining people, or contracts, or architects, and each of those games has been a very different battle. Also, where the fairs are and what bonuses start on the board, and especially how the dice fall each round, will all hugely impact the puzzle. And it is that puzzle that keeps bringing us back. Finding those clever combos where you can take a king action, that gets you a bonus merchant action, that gets you a character action, that lets you move your architect to just the place you need it to be at the start of your next turn. It doesn't happen every turn, but when it does, you feel very clever. There are pluses and minuses here. First of all, Tillatum is unabashedly Euro, so be prepared for more beige than a 70s suit store. Also, the dice color choices are a bit odd, with light gray, blue gray, and dark gray accounting for three of the four colors. And the faces of the people are all a little bit off as well, especially Renaissance Seth Green. But on the flip side of that, all of the wooden bits are great, especially the pillars. And a lot of thought has gone into making the gameplay run smoothly. The player boards are exceptionally well laid out. The board is all incredibly well labeled with clear spots for everything. And all of the iconography is terrific, which all helps the game flow surprisingly well. The other big standout here are the cathedral tiles, which are all in pleasingly specific shapes that kind of force you to want to collect them. Tillotum plays from one to four, and it works fine at all counts. As you increase the player count, you open up more spaces on the board for building, and add more tiles and cathedrals to the mix. 
We focused on the two-player game and the closed-off spots do a great job of tightening things up so that feeling of racing for the best stuff remains regardless of count. One thing to note, however, is that turns can sometimes take a bit of doing slash thinking, so at higher counts you could have a bit of a break before it gets back to you again. There is also a solo mode where players take on the Cardinal Bot, which can be set to various levels, ranging from pretty tough to very tough. This mode uses a row of cards and a set of fairly complex actions to do a pretty good job of creating a slightly different but fairly close approximation of the multiplayer game. Be warned though, it is a steep learning curve and you will likely need a clarification or two along the way. If you're familiar with Tassini and Luciani's designs, you will already have a sense of what Tilatum is bringing to the table, but it does feel different enough from the half dozen or so of their games that we've played that it has earned a place in our collection. Partly, that's because it feels a little bit more accessible. Not that it's a game for new or casual gamers, but it doesn't feel as heavy as some of the other T games. There's still a good chunk of thinking and planning, but there are also a lot of paths to combos and to points, and just about everything that you do will get you something. This is not the kind of Euro where you need to feed people. Tillatum suggests what you should do, but mostly lets you just go off and make your own choices. If you are okay without a lot of theme, and like heavy-ish Euros, but want something a smidge more open that can ride that balance between thinky interconnected decisions and slightly lighter rules overhead, Tillatum is a nice addition to one of the most respected series in gaming. And that is it. Have you played Tillatum? What are your other favorite games in the T-Series? Let us know in the comments, and as always, please like and subscribe, and hopefully we will see you all next time for another game.